What's good, everybody? It's Chan with Ann. We're here today with... Kosi Parid. And we're about to do her interview. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Where are you coming from and where, uh, where were you born and raised? Um, I was born and raised in Jamaica, Queens, New York. Okay. Um, I lived out there for a majority of my life up until I would say about age 12, 13. Mm-hmm. And then I moved to Staten Island. And ever since we've been here, Staten Island, I've done high school, mm-hmm. majority of high school in Staten Island. You know, I moved a lot during my life, but mm. majority of my life has been lived in Staten Island. That's fire. And were you introduced to music in Queens or here in Staten Island? Um, Queens. 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 My okay. father is a producer, so nice. like on a major label, well, in the past. Mm-hmm. So I got a lot of my music background from him. Okay. Um, He's produced for various, like various artists, like 90s artists, 90s R&B singers, rappers. So um, just being around that environment, being around him mm. all the time kind of influenced that. It wasn't until though, two thousand and I would say eighteen. Yeah, that I that's when I started, started. Music a little more seriously for my mm-hmm. like my solo career, um, and ever since then I've kind of like just gradually been increasing. So. And was he the one who brought you to the studio, or did you feel like you did that yourself? Um, he definitely kept me in the studio environment. Like mm-hmm. definitely, I would give that credit to my dad. Like he had a studio in his house, and people would just be in and out, in and out. So he definitely brought me into the studio environment he taught me about logic he taught me about pro tools gotcha. he taught me like the basics but you know sometimes people can teach you as much as you want to learn so yeah. you know he could teach me everything but i wasn't ready at the time so heard you heard i took you. what i learned and i learned even more on my own have you ever made a song with him like did he ever produce a beat for you or engineer your he, thing yeah he, he's done a lot of beats uh, mostly beats for me engineering mm-hmm. i found i had to like venture off and find my own engineers but he's done a lot of beats for me in the past. Not now, but mm-hmm. in the past, definitely. Like he showed me about sampling. He showed me about uh, how to do al- album covers, you know, and Photoshop and stuff like that. So a lot of my cre- creativity definitely comes from my dad. Got you. So as you mentioned, in 2018, you actually started, and the two songs that stuck out to me was uh, "Say That Word" and "Middleman." Ah. Um, what was, uh, as you said, that was the beginning of the career. How was those two songs coming into play? Like when you were actually recording it, were you nervous to release that? Mm. I was very uh, nervous to share, just to even record. I would go in the studio and I'm with uh, Vince, who's still my engineer till mm-hmm. like, from now. Um, and I was just so timid at that time. But I was going through a really tough breakup and I just had to get it out. And mm-hmm. he was the first engineer that, that was like open, started to go to my voice and, and I was comfortable. Yeah. It was definitely nerve wracking sharing the project. But yeah. the project was done within like a month because I had so much emotion to get out mm-hmm. and we got it done fast. But it, I, I don't regret anything about it. I just would go now listening to my growth. I would definitely go back, make some minor adjustments, minor adjustments. But yeah, I was ner- nervous just sharing it to people and just mm-hmm. wait, awaiting the the response. Like if they liked it, if it was bad, if I, you know, she mm-hmm. better here or here. But yeah, it was it was a lot. It was a lot. I see, and I see. I feel like you're more of like an R and B type of person. Yeah. Um, how was like? I know you shared your feelings, and that was a relationship. Uh, what was the words behind it that you wanted the message to be uh, seen behind those two songs? Hmm. Okay, behind say the word. Uh, it was kind of like if you know if you don't want me, just say you know just say mm-hmm. that you know, or if you don't if you don't feel like I'm worthy enough, you can you can go have somebody else, and yeah. I'll be fine. So I you agree know, with that. I'll, like I'll be good with or without you. And behind, what was the second Middleman. Middleman? Hmm. During that time, I was just tired of people, like, pretty much people in the middle telling me, like, what to do with my career, how mm-hmm. to sing. Oh, you should sound like, you kind of sound like her. You should do more Janaeic. I was going to say that. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> party next door type kind of vibes. And, and I love these artists. Mm-hmm. I love these artists. But it, it's people that were, like, pushing that, uh, like pushing it on me to super hard. Like I get yeah. like, oh, she kind, you kind of sound like, you know. Mm-hmm. But like they're like, yeah, no, you should write like this, or you should have this. Uh, what, what's the this, this aesthetic? aesthetic you yeah. know what I mean? And and I was just like, you know, don't don't talk to the. I don't want to talk to the middleman. Take me to the boss. I feel you. The boss okay. for me is God. So yeah, like I don't want to sit and have conversations with people that aren't even musically related at all. That are trying mm-hmm. to like criticize me or tell me. 
You know what I'm saying? So that's what that song was about. It was very personal. <laughs> I feel you, feel you. And that's really cool because I, I was going to ask you, like, who were the artists that influenced you? And I saw a post that you actually did have a picture of you where you were on the beach. And I gave you Janae a Coles, but I can't remember what was the <laughs> cover that she did, but it was from The Worst, the song The Worst. Oh, yeah, yeah, So yeah, I, yeah. was that like you were trying to reference that or like... No, not at all. It's so funny because I just... I, it's so funny when people say that because I'm literally in my own world, like mm-hmm. in my own head. And then I, I do listen to a lot of... Um, I used to like during early days, I used to mm-hmm. listen to a lot of Janae. I go... I think she kind of stopped a little bit or slowed yeah. down, but... Yeah, no, it, it wasn't like a connection there because I'm just in my own mind. So when I Heard see you. a comparison, I'm like, oh, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, when I was listening to music, it was going insane. I was like, damn, she really makes me think of that. And then I see later on in 2009, you started to collab and I saw the song Bad Vibes and I actually got to meet Kaden. I think I'm saying his right. Hey, I just got a phone okay, yeah. with Kaden this morning. That's too. crazy. I told him like, yeah, we haven't spoken in a while, but I told him like, yeah, I'm about to go to a pod. He was like, oh, do you think? We were just catching up, mm-hmm. catching up. We've been building, both been growing and... Yeah, sometimes you can't always be attentive to friends, but yeah, we were just catching up. Mm-hmm. And I was just let him know I'm on my way here. So that's 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 funny you, you mentioned Caden. <laughs> and how did you meet him? Was he like one of the first artists that you collabed with? No, um, the first uh, artist I've collabed with was Chucky. His name Chucky. is Chucky. Yeah, okay. he's a rapper, and we we collectively like we were in a group called NFS, mm-hmm. um, and we kind of started from there. It was mainly rappers. And I was the Is only, it Chucky Hollywood or something yeah, like that? Okay, I, I heard was about the only him. Singer, so heard you. It was kind of like you know, what we were building something, and then I kind of branched off. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I was doing a lot of features during that time, like a lot of features. Just every song I had was pretty much a feature. That's why, I, Got you. you know, my solo project. You see, uh, for things unexplained, you see there's no features on it. Mm-hmm. I like kind of backed away, and then you later know, on, singles, came. yeah, later on. So yeah, Caden was definitely one of the more um, advanced mm-hmm. artists I met further down in my career, like living in Staten Island and yeah. the connections I made. Um, great writer, super dope writer. Um, and that just came about like we were just vibing, and I was just like, Hey, I got this song, mm-hmm. this song for you if you wanted to get on it. And he having to, you know, he's fire. I'm not gonna lie, the pen. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's super dope. I saw him as live performance, and I was gonna do an interview with him as well, but a lot of things were going on, so we had yeah. to cancel that. Yeah. But I'm willing to work uh, with him in the future, and yeah. that's really cool that you got to know him. And the oh, beat was like the easy. It was yeah. like easy from like I think it was Kanye West's or the weekend, not the weekend, sorry, the okay. game. Uh, one of them was pretty much they just did it with their recent projects and it was like the same beat sample and it was really cool to hear that yeah. and for you to like I honestly me personally I feel like you bodied that beat more Thank than you. they did so <laughs> that, was... that, that's, that happens a lot though like mm-hmm. people don't give uh, like I would say the the because I, I think of myself as a huge artist yeah. but like because I'm not at that point in my career people will view it and be like oh she did the sample but this is Kanye West that did the sample yeah. so we have to go Kanye West because he's the bigger artist, but you know a lot of these up and coming artists, mm-hmm. small artists, do it better most yeah. likely. And the the big artists are stealing, they're scouting the recognition, and yeah, and getting ideas from the the artists like us, where they're just like, oh, let's just you know, they don't they they can't do anything, they can't touch us up here, so you know. Uh, I Thank you. you, I appreciate that. Of course. And then later on in 2020, uh, you dropped the you dropped the invisible line. Um, and this uh sirens and guitars, it speaks mm-hmm. about a relationship about staying about like if you should stay and that you're losing yourself a little by yeah, little in that. Yeah. Um what was the message? Was that another breakup that you have or was that just from like two thousand eighteen? Um, two thousand eighteen. What was I going through? <laughs> I'm always going through. <laughs> um, two thousand eighteen. I was single. Yeah, so t- this one came in 2020, but like in 2018, how you say you had a breakup? Oh, okay, like, was that okay, a continuing okay, from okay. that, or it's like? Yeah, it was like a you know, cause the the relationship lasted a little long. Um, so it, and it was my first like major relationship as a teenager, so that I was like super dramatic, like oh my god, my heart. I <laughs> feel you. <laughs> <laughs> so it, I, it 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 lasted longer than it should have. I'm just more sentimental in my music anyway. I like to connect to women and mm-hmm. connect to men and their emotions too. So um, I would say it stemmed, it stemmed from there, and I kind of get got into like songs like Bad Vibe where I'm just like, I don't care anymore. Like we chilling. Like let's have fun. I'm, I'm I've been crying about all you. of this for all of these years. I'm ready to you know be out there and make myself just start fresh, make myself mm-hmm. new. And I actually did notice one of the songs that you dropped was on. Um, give me a second. Where is it? 
it was in 2019 with the album Hesitate and the song mm-hmm. Diamond Dancing. You came with a whole different flow. I was like, oh shit, she went <laughs> rapped. I'm like, I didn't know she could rap too now. Like, no, yeah, no, yeah. That's funny. That's funny. Because I'm a songwriter. Mm-hmm. So I write for for drill rappers. I write for really? okay. singers. So so my, my, the, what is the word? What is the, it's a word. It's a word. Like the um, catalog. Gotcha. The catalog is huge. Like from pop. Uh, I could RP, write rock. Yeah. I could write. Wow. Okay. You know, yeah. Like I just don't share this music. These mm-hmm. are these are things I have in my files, like my archives. But I don't I don't necessarily share it. I plan to. I really mm-hmm. plan to. Um, I've been dropping like on my page a look, you know. More yeah, some snippets and all. Freestyle, some little rap stuff that I've been, you know, playing with. But yeah, I've always been like multifaceted where I could write. I could really go sixteen for sixteen with mm-hmm. with your your best rapper if I if I really That's fine. wanted to, or I could you know switch it up and go vocal for vocal with you know a great singer so um i'm more so a songwriter where it's just like i'm open i'm just open to whatever i feel at the moment that's how i write i I, whatever i feel in that moment i go off of that or the production and um i go from there so heard you heard you and i know you drop uh, music videos as well from coca kisses one more drink and as well how did we get here which one oh, and who's what's what's that vibe? What was your favorite video doing it? Cause like everything that when I was watching your visuals, it literally played a story in my house. Like oh shit, like it really does mm-hmm. go with this song. Thank you, I appreciate it. Which that. one? Of course. Which one um, was your favorite um video to do? Huh. Hmm. Which one was my favorite? Hmm. That's a good question. Mm-hmm. Because I have some on YouTube too, but I didn't really. Those were like old. Mm-hmm. I would say my favorite video to do to film. The production of it, the the entire like crew and everything was mm-hmm. Coco Kiss. Coco Kiss, okay. Coco Kiss, the, it, just the production, costume. It was just fun to like do, have everyone come and have a certain attire, mm-hmm. you know, a certain dress code. Um, we had drinks. We were actually at a bar. Like, yeah. It was a, it was a dope vibe. It was really dope. And who? Shout out to um. Yeah, go ahead. Shout out to Not Common. That's the director, uh, female okay. director from New Jersey. She. Gave me that opportunity, and we worked together actually twice on two music videos. But Coco Kiss was just, I loved it. I loved the whole vibe. That's fire. And what was the message behind Coco Kiss? Um, Just exaggerating my appreciation for my boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as a black man, just his features and his, you know, uh, his looks and just the, the small little things about him mm-hmm. as a person that I really just loved. That's Coco Kiss, like he's he's dark skin, you know, brown skin, and um, and just the connection we had during that time, and mm-hmm. it was just growing. It was just, you know, we were all in love and stuff. So that was like an exaggeration of just his his features and his beauty and his, you know, just appreciate him a little bit more. That's fire, because I actually went into your YouTube channel and I saw your vibes with him, and I see the connection, and I could see like in your eyes that you really love this guy. Yeah, absolutely. That's fire. And there was a, actually a song that I feel like he, he was in the in your music videos as well, right? Yeah, we did a whole project. Yeah, together. I knew it. Okay, yeah, I knew that was him. Because you were telling me he's, he's a clothing brand. I was like, so maybe it's not the guy in the cover. No, yeah, with him. he's multifaceted too. Like, he's a whole designer. I'm a whole singer, but I'm a photographer. But I'm also mm-hmm. this, but I'm also engineering. So it's just we both just are in a lot of things. So we're, yeah, you'll be surprised. And how did you guys meet, if you don't mind me asking? Um, We met. How did we meet? He knew me in high school. Got you. But I was in a relationship. I didn't know him at the time, but mm-hmm. he brought it to my attention. Um, so after I broke up with my boyfriend, like 2017, mm-hmm. um, my boyfriend and I, my ex boyfriend and I were doing for photographs. We were like for to- having photography. photography. So okay. um, uh, I, I had set up a, a, a like a shoot with him. Mm-hmm. You know, we were supposed to shoot together. It, long story short, it never got to happen. Um, so like, like a couple months later, I saw him at the ferry and I was, That's crazy. we didn't say anything to each other, but I was like, well, oh, that was weird. And, um, like a month and a half later, uh, I, I like DM him like, Hey, I saw you at the ferry a couple months ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was stupid, but no, ever since then we, uh, I had a fashion show. I was mm-hmm. having an audition for a fashion show. He pulled up, um, and we've been together ever since so. that's fire so it has to take came out in 2019 and from those songs my favorite songs was no uh no quiet blue cup oh, not quite no not quite sorry not it's quite okay. uh blue coop uh as well as dancing diamonds um what was your favorite song in that project working with him hmm. 
I would say not quite. Not quite. Okay. That's the first. Like we rubbed off on each on on each other in that you know mm-hmm. that 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 process. So he opened me up more to the 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 rap. Yeah. Thing. I was doing rapping, but he made it, you know, yeah. like you do more rapping and I'll do, he was more sentimental on a, on that song. So not specifically rapping, but in the overall project. Gotcha. Um, but not quite specifically because of the way it came about. I, I, I originally recorded the song months ago mm-hmm. when we were just still kind of like in the talking stages, you know, um, and he came over and I heard him sing. But he's been singing. But I heard him sing on the track. Like I said, can you just do the like the yeah. the ad libs? And and when I heard it, I was like, hmm. And it really like it brought it reignited the flame for me for that song because I had put that song to rest. Like I was mm-hmm. like, I'm not gonna drop that. And um, when he got on it, he did the vocals and it sounded beautiful. And I was like, okay, let's bring this back to life. And that's actually the song that started. To buzz um, up. Hesitant yeah. The, the EP. So yeah, it was a, it was special. For me. That's really cool. And I know our other artists you also worked with was Reek and as well... Why, I've, I've worked with YO too. YO too. There, there you go. I just didn't release it. We haven't released any tracks together. I've worked with so many artists. We just have... It's just unreleased for mm-hmm. whatever of various reasons, whether the artist isn't ready to, you know, share it, whether... Um, I'm not ready to share it, but I've worked with um, an, another artist called... His name is Shaq Woods. He's from Jersey. Just different artists, just different dope mm-hmm. artists. Brun Nigel, he's from uh, Brooklyn. Just a, 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 a various artists from different places. It's just sometimes you may see the music and yeah. sometimes you may not. And who was your overall favorite artist besides Kaylin um, that you worked with from Brooklyn, all the boroughs combined? Mm-hmm. That's a good question. Um, I love, well, not to be biased because he's my boyfriend, but Reek is dope. He's super dope, dope rapper. Um, I love YO, he's a dope rapper. Singer, dope mm-hmm. rapper and singer. Um, I want to. Um, Benatra Banks is a dope, dope rapper. She's a female rapper from Staten Island. Um, I want to work with more females. Heard you, I've yeah. always been working with males, so now I'm trying to just like you know get more into like working with female singers, mm-hmm. rappers. Um, another dope art. My favorite artist that I've worked with this year is mm-hmm. Javon. His name is Javon, the singer. He's from Connecticut, but he's on my unreleased album. Gotcha. Um, if I let you tell it, and his he just blew me away. Like the way the the song came about, mm-hmm. the process, the it was it was just like wow, he's a real artist and he's really serious about his craft. And um, yeah, work with his him has to probably has my favorite so far. I heard you. And how was performance? Cause I know you had a performance with Major Stage. How did that go? That was last year, I believe, in November. Yeah, that was last year. That that was dope. It was a great experience just for me to come out and. I haven't performed before that in like mm-hmm. probably like a month and some change, but like I've done like smaller sets, like five minutes, a couple gotcha. songs, but that was like my major, my first major um, set. Mm-hmm. The set was uh, 15 to 20 minutes Wow. Okay. Um, in a while. So it, it really pushed me and got me back into the swing of things as far mm-hmm. as an artist, being an artist, uh, preparation. It just showed me where I'm at now at, at mm-hmm. that time and what I need to improve on. Um, the feedback from the crowd was amazing. I, the vibes, I just love the. I love the whole night. The vibes, the you know, the they really make you feel really special. Like major stage. Um, so shout out, shout out to major stage. You know, artists. I tell every artist try if you can. If you have a manager or if you don't have a manager, DM major stage and really try to get on that platform because the networking you'll get from that from going on there is is is, is out of this world. Heard. Yeah, I met a lot of people there That's that fine. I connect with today, and they, they call me for shows now, so That's it awesome. was dope. And I saw, how is your regular routine in a studio? Because when I was watching your blog as well for that one, you're over there with your producer listening to the beat, jumping back into the booth, and coming back out to hear it. Like, what is your daily routine once you walk in? Hmm. Uh, a, a day in the life for me, recording, um, hmm. Mostly just lit, like 80% of the day looks like just listening to beats. Gotcha. Or just whether it's YouTube, whether people email me, whether I'm with a producer right face to face, either creating the beat from scratch or just listen, just thumbing through beats. Mm-hmm. Like that's 80% of writing. You just have to find the vibe. Like I'm not, I'm never going to fake like, oh yeah, this is dope and like yeah. force a song. So 
first I'll have to listen to a bunch of beats. Sometimes I listen to regular music that I like first, mm -hmm. um, then the beats, and then I'll get just right away. First thing I do, melody. Heard Before, you. like, I'll hum, like, da, 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 da. Okay. no words, mm -hmm. and then I'll take the melody. And go from there. And go from there. I got you. That's fire. And so tell us a little bit about, uh, I'll let you tell it, uh, about your album that's coming up soon. Like, what should we, <laughs> uh, if I let you tell it, what should we expect for you? How many songs and like how many people will be working with you on that album? Um, right now I only have one feature. Okay. Uh, I want, I want to get one more, but if, you know, the, the project's already ready to go. Yeah. It's already uploaded, um, in the distribution. I can always revive it, make, you know, yeah. make changes, but, um, I can't think of anyone I want on the project right now for this specific project. It's more R&B based. Mm -hmm. um, but you, yeah, you guys can expect like just love, man. Love. Got you. Mature love. Like, versus things I'm explaining where I'm young and I'm just dumb. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I feel I'm just you. doing things and just, you know, with this person that I think is love. But, you know, this is, this, if I let you tell it, is a more mature. Mm -hmm. uh, perspective of being in love and the, the emotions that are evoked from that mm -hmm. so yeah that's what this project is about that's what you guys gotcha. can expect definitely some vibes on it though I heard you heard you hits. and what does love mean to you because like you said like in the beginning like you started talking about like toxic love in your music and now like this is gonna be uh -huh. a new thing um, um what does that stand for you now my understanding of love is god so mm -hmm. when i was like obviously from when i was younger my understanding of love was like people validation it mm -hmm. was materialistic things it was people complimenting me is you know just the misconception we have of love now at this age i'm 25 years old um i understand that love is god god is love so if you if i'm building my relationship with god um i'm love i'm already you know we all have love in us mm -hmm. um and i think if people just you know hone in on that and really tap into that that relationship they'll know how to receive love so if I have God and you don't, I'm going to have, I'm trying to give it to you, but you're not going to receive it because you haven't a blockage, huh? understood okay. that as love yet. So, you know, that's where I'm at now. That's where I'm at now. That's fire. And what is like the hardest thing that you ever had to face as an artist? Um, the hardest thing I've ever had to face as an artist. Criticism. Got you. Yeah. Criticism you. definitely could make or break an artist. It could tell you who's made for this or not mm -hmm. like criticism just throughout the, my whole career my entire career just some constructive and some people malicious like you know you can't tell sometimes like sometimes it'll be from a friend you know a friend you think oh they're just giving me advice like to you know about my music but really they don't like you so they I want feel you to feel one. like yeah. insecure about yourself but then you have those that the real criticism like i've had criticism i've gotten criticism from executives from major labels mm -hmm. or artists from on major labels so it's just the criticism you just have to learn how to receive it and take it with a grain of salt and move on and just know that this is just a moment in my life this is just a, a season this is mm -hmm. a, a little window a little my best friend i was on the phone with her she was just telling me like this is a just a chapter in, a, in your story mm -hmm. so that's how I, I will look at it now like this is just a chapter in, in this big, this book, pages and pages. So don't, I would tell artists, just don't take it to heart, mm -hmm. you know, because I used to take it to heart and I used to get insecure and like feel second guess my craft. But I would tell now, don't take it to heart. Just take it with a grain of salt because you're always going to get criticized. You see on Instagram, like, yeah, you could be dope. Everything about you is perfect. They're going to find something. So it doesn't matter. Either way, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah. Just be you, do you and just be genuine. I and like people will always gravitate to that. You'll have 70,000 people that hate you, but all it takes is that 100, 150K that love you. And, and just, we, we're yeah. so focused on the people that hate us, that two people, three people that hate us over this 100,000. You know, that's just how we are. That's in our human nature. That's what I, that goes back to love, though. I feel you on that one. And what advice do you have for, as a female rap, uh, female artist, mm -hmm. or just an artist in general? Um... For artists or in general or uh, both. Hmm. Um, be teachable. Okay. Be teachable. Like I know a lot of artists that are on my level that are just egotistic. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me nothing. This I got this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, I got talent. Talent mm -hmm. means nothing if you don't have character. Talent means nothing if you don't have integrity. Ta talent mean, means nothing if you don't have compassion for others. 
And um, I think a lot of artists, their character and their, um, just just their, who they are as a person is just ugly mm-hmm. in, internally. So then you get on bigger platforms and now you have more money and now that's that's magnified. So people are like, ew, why is he, why is he moving yeah, like that? Yeah. Why is he... I, we didn't see this before, but this is who he is. You have to work on your character. It's not just about your talent. Sure. I would say that. That's fire. That's fire. Um. So where can we find your Instagram, uh, your music, and what should we expect from you? Um. You guys can find my music on all streaming platforms. Um. Like I, as I mentioned earlier, Cosi Pari, C O S I, dot P A R I. That's on all platforms: Spotify, iTunes, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok. Cosi Pari. Awesome, and also you guys can check in for her merch as well. She has hoodies right yeah. here. She customized it as well with her and Enrique as well, and it's fire. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. And we could get this. Where I was gonna things? bring him a piece, but <laughs> we were, we're out of stock. But I got you. We definitely I, I gotta get that. that. Yeah, for a fact. Um, we could. They could get this on Instagram, correct? Yes, you guys can find the merch. Just DM me right now. We're working on the website. Um, so for the me in the meantime, just DM me. I can definitely you know set you guys up with something. Uh, and I have a price chart. So yeah, just DM me and I'll, I'll get back to you guys. And two more questions. Mm-hmm. First one is, um, how did you get your name? Kosi Paris. Okay, Kosi. Kosi is, Kosi, Kosi is like an Italian phrase. It's like mm. so-so nonchalant. Um, and that's like half of my personality. Whereas Paris um, means beautiful butterfly. Yeah, Sorry. so so I'm like a nonchalant. A nonchalant butterfly. butterfly okay, that's, that's cool. cool, that's cool. But, um, you know, I have a lot of personality, so... Got you. And where do you see yourself in a year or two? Hmm. In a year or two, I see myself in my loft. Uh, business, business has started. I'm, I'm a business owner as well. Mm-hmm. So I see myself in my loft. My business is booming. Uh, I'm getting shows. I'm in a new state. I'm, I'm starting my recording studio, getting that up and running. That's fine. Um, and eventually my label. Okay. So, you know, that's coming soon. I can't say too much about that. But say less. Yeah, yeah, album out. And I'm, and I'm on some sort of tour. Okay, like cool. Like, beginner tour. Not too much. I feel you. But some sort of beginner tour to start. Stay tuned for that. I will Stay definitely tuned. be down yes, for definitely. that and get a video for that. Thank you so much for coming on Thank the show. I appreciate that, of course. This, this whole movement, I just want to say to you and, and you, just keep going. Keep Thank going. You. You're going to have days where it's like, oh. Totally about it. People yeah. canceling. The mic broke. This broke. This broke down. You have to buy this over. And it just feels like sometimes it'll feel like like I'm stuck. Yeah. But you're doing something. And just even for me to just be here and just hear about it through the grapevine or see you yeah. on pop up on my explore page is, is a fine. lot. Thank you're, you. You, you know, you're making progress. So that's just my flowers to you. Thank, thank you for you having so me. Of course. Um, thank you so much, you know, for yeah. helping him out. Because if you guys didn't help each other, that, yeah. you know, it's hard without a team. It's even it harder. So shout out to you guys. Thank Keep you going. So much. Appreciate that. All right, thank you guys for watching, and this is um, Channel Amp.